If you look at the history of virtually every computer chip ever made, from the massive machines of the 1950s to the smartphone in your pocket right now, they work by grabbing a group of electrons and physically pushing them through a wire to get from point A to point B. This method is based on the electrical charge of the electron. While it has served us incredibly well for decades, it comes with an unavoidable physical cost. When you force electrons to move through a circuit, they scatter and create friction. That friction turns into heat, which is exactly why your phone gets warm when you ask it to do something difficult. We have spent the last 50 years making the wire smaller and the electrons faster, but we never address the core problem. We are wasting massive amounts of energy just moving things around. So, is there a way to communicate without shoving massive amounts of charge through wires? Turns out, there is. Electrons have another intrinsic property called spin, which you can think of as the electron rotating on its own axis, almost like a tiny planet or a spinning top. The field of spintronics is trying to build computers that rely less on pushing the electron forward and more on flipping its spin state. Imagine you are trying to send a simple yes or no message to a friend across a crowded room. The way our current computers work is like writing the message on a piece of paper, fighting your way through the crowd, running all the way over to your friend, and handing it to them physically. That is charge. It requires movement, it takes time, and burns energy to fight through the crowd. Spintronics is like standing in the corner of the room and simply holding up a sign that is red on one side and green on the other. If you want to say yes, you just flip the sign. You have sent the exact same information, but because you utilized the state of the object rather than its position, you did it instantly with almost zero effort. To actually make this concept work in the real world, you first have to deal with the problem that electrons usually spin in every random direction, creating a mess that is useless for sending clear signals. Scientists are solving this using special materials called Hoistler alloys, which you can think of as functioning exactly like a pair of polarized sunglasses for electricity. They filter out the disorganized scatter and strictly allow only the electron spinning in the correct direction to pass through the wire. Once you have established that clear flow of traffic, the next challenge is finding a way to flip the signal as fast as possible without wasting energy. This is where a mechanism called spin orbit torque comes in. Unlike older methods that clumsily pushed the magnet from the outside using a magnetic field, this new method uses the quantum momentum of the electron's own spin to deliver a side swipe that snaps the magnet into a new position instantly. This allows us to switch states without the lag that usually slows down memory. This technology has a broader goal, to build computer hardware that physically resembles and operates like a human brain. By using tiny magnetic whirlpools called skyrmions to act like neurons, and unstable magnets that intentionally flicker to create randomness, we can build chips that adapt and approximate just like a biological mind does. This offers a massive leap in efficiency because just one of these unstable magnets can do the job of a complex random number generator circuit that normally requires hundreds of transistors. There is, however, a significant manufacturing barrier. The most advanced, next-generation magnetic materials, often just a single atom thick, are incredibly fragile. They cannot survive the scorching temperatures required in standard chip factories. This has forced researchers working on these specific 2D materials to use a laboratory technique that involves peeling layers with sticky tape to place them onto the circuit without melting them. The reason we are pushing through these difficult manufacturing challenges is that the potential payoff changes the rules of computing performance. We are currently living in the nanosecond era. But these new spintronic switches have already demonstrated speeds of 0.35 nanoseconds. Looking just a little further ahead, once we use lasers to flip the magnets, we enter the femtosecond range, achieving speeds that are physically impossible for standard electronics to match. The defining advantage of this technology is its potential to address the power constraints of modern artificial intelligence through an architecture called Compute in Memory where the chip performs calculations right inside the storage unit instead of wasting energy shuffling data back and forth. With prototypes surpassing 100 tera operations per watt, we are approaching the efficiency required to deploy large language models on mobile devices, independent of massive data centers. 
There is very little doubt regarding the underlying physics. Because laboratory conditions have already produced a 19,000% improvement in signal clarity that is vastly superior to anything currently in use. While this confirms that the scientific plan is sound, the battle to take those materials out of the freezer and stabilize them for everyday manufacturing is far from over.